Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. I'm the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer RVA located in Richmond, Virginia. I'm also a Dixie Belle brand ambassador. For today's YouTube video, we are going to take this really damaged but really still beautiful dresser and make it over to an Art Deco masterpiece. I start all my projects by cleaning with white lightning and rinsing with water. This piece required that I do this inside and out. Due to the texture issues on this piece, I did do a slight sand scuff before beginning to prime my piece in boss. This boss will allow me to paint over top of it without worrying any bleed through and it also blocks any smells that are on the piece. I applied this bonding boss in gray to the entire piece including the back as well as washing the interior of this piece due to the fact that it was in a smoker's home, allowing it to dry thoroughly outside in the bright sunshine to remove any smells from this piece. Also a quick little reminder that you do need to allow your bonding boss to dry for 24 hours before you begin to paint. This is due to the fact that it also contains that slick stick which is your gripping adhesion primer. Since some of the hardware was missing on this piece, I will be only able to salvage the top two pieces on the top drawer. This is going to require me filling in the original holes and then using Dixie Belle's mud to prepare this piece for paint. After the mud has dried, I'm going to sand it back to completely flat and then cover those areas with bonding boss. Stay tuned to the end because this video is the entire complete process of painting this dresser from step one to done. Well, hello, hello, Dixie Belle paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA coming to you live because it is Wednesday and I'm live here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. to sit on the floor and play with paint. And I have some new stuff to show you. So let's jump right in. As always, if I happen to miss your question as I go along, if you have a question at all, feel free to drop it in the comments below. I might or might not see it while I'm working, but if I don't see it, I promise to come back in and answer it after I am finished. So we have a new project today and she was, uh, she was a prep work project. Let me tell you that new bonding boss is, is getting its workout at my house. I've been using the new bonding boss on so many projects and this piece really, really needed it because when I purchased it, it was sitting in somebody's yard. And if I would have known that it was sitting in somebody's yard, I mean, I think they just put it out there. I probably wouldn't have bought it, but I brought it home and put it in the shed like I do all of my projects um, and then I realized it was kind of stinky. This was in a smoker's home and if you have ever purchased a piece of furniture that has lived in a smoker's home, you know that sometimes things are stinky and dirty. When you wash them and clean them, they have a lot of residue on them. They have that nicotine stain. It's disgusting. If you want to see the prep work that went into this piece, um, before I got it to this point, you are more than welcome to check out my Instagram. I just posted today or my TikTok. So I took this piece from the shed and first of all, took all the drawers out and aired it out in the sun. It got a really good airing out in the sun. I then came in and washed inside and out with white lightning as well as a rinse with water. White lightning is really good for deglossing, but it also takes off that horrible nicotine and all the stains that sit on the outside of a project. So after I finished that, uh, I realized that there was some texture on this piece that I really didn't want on there. So I sanded it lightly to remove some of the texture and then I painted it with two even coats of bonding boss and gray. Now bonding boss and gray is great to use because it, it's kind of like a great color to use when you don't know what color you're going to paint. It's going to help you when you're painting any light colors, any pinks, any reds, anything like that because it's going to help your paint go the distance. Um, so I chose gray because I didn't know at that point what I was going to do with this piece. Puppy dogs, be gone. Two puppy dogs come in here. Of course when I start talking, my dogs think I'm talking to them. So go away with your heavy breathing and you're scratching yourselves. <laughs> so after I cleaned it and got this white lightning done to it, I rinsed it with water and then I still let it sit in the sunshine and kind of bake a little bit. That's really going to help with the stink factor. And then I used two coats of bonding boss in gray. I then brought this piece inside and had to drill new holes because sadly the original hardware um, that is on this piece is not, where is it? I have original hardware somewhere, somewhere. Oh, you know what? It's on the floor. It's on the floor. So this piece had some pieces that were broken on the hardware. I was hoping to get at least enough hardware to cover the bottom three drawers, but sadly that wouldn't be enough. So I'm going to keep the original hardware for the top of this piece. So it's going to sit like this. 
on the top of the piece. I'm going to spray paint these bright gold and I ordered new hardware and drilled new holes for this piece. Um, a glass and gold hardware from Amazon. I think I got six new pieces of gold hardware from Amazon for less than $17, which is like, you cannot beat it. You should totally shop Amazon if you're looking for hardware. Um, but I'm going to keep the two original hardware on the top drawer and the new hardware on the base because there's kind of like a little bit of a frame. So I feel like it can be a little bit different. So that, my friends, is where we're at for the start of this piece. But I am going to give you a peek at something brand new and you might not have seen it ever before. Are you ready? I'm going to base this entire project off of a brand new transfer. This transfer is called the Magnificent, let's see if I can say that 10 times fast. Magnificent Magnolia Transfer. Magnificent Magnolia Transfer. You can see it here. You can see the label here. I'm going to show you what's inside this transfer. So what made me choose this transfer? Well, first of all, hello. Look at those flowers. I mean, to die for, to die for. So this piece actually has two images that go together. You can see these gorgeous magnolias right here. You can actually line them up and you will have enough to pretty much cover the front of a dresser. Now, if you know me, I'm not normally the kind of girl who sticks a transfer right in the middle of a piece and, and leaves it be. You know I'm gonna cut this up. You know I'm gonna make this crazy and individual and on my own. So my thought process is, let me aim the camera up here and show you what I'm thinking. See the curve of the dresser? There's a slight lip right here where this curve starts. So my thought process was to, and if you look at this, this kind of bunch of flowers, they drape downwards. Like sure you could put them this way, but that would look weird to me unless it was at the bottom. So I think what's gonna happen is after I paint this piece, I'm going to line up this edge. Let's see if I can do it enough to show you and start to drape them about here. So I'm gonna cut where that lip is and drape this transfer down. Now along with these two big pieces that you see of pages, you have two entire pages of blooms. Totally gorgeous. What do you see on this one? The branches. Remember my buds and branches transfer, which was phenomenal for layering? Same sort of style. Branches, layers, building up these little bits. So my plan is to either start here and leave this piece like this, and then layer the branches down from the top, coming down the edges, or going with those branches coming up from the bottom. I really, really want to see drips and trails and prettiness. I'm gonna turn this around so that you guys can see exactly what's included in this transfer. I know that this is not available online yet until Monday, I believe, or next week, but you can also contact your Dixie Bell retailer to see if they have it. So imagine those two big sheets, halfway draping, and then pieces trailing down with gold knobs, and gold hardware and piece de resistance. Let me see if I can reach it. This is Would You Bend number 133.1. See how there's a little square inset here as well? I should say rectangle, it's a rectangle shape. What if that was sitting over top with gold? So cute, right? It's starting to come together. Starting to come together. So, this, my friends, is how I am going to plan this entire piece around this transfer, and you might have already seen it at the top. The color that we are choosing today is called Weeping Willow from the Cottage Collection line. See how beautiful that color is with those beautiful blooms? I have advice for you if you are ever wondering, like me, hmm, what color do I choose for my project when I want to use this transfer? I want you to think about what colors are inside the transfer. If I look at this transfer, I see Weeping Willow, I see a kind of dull bougainvillea. I see obviously a very light pink champagne. There's a touch of purple in here. So you could do a really beautiful cottage door if you wanted from the cottage line. You could do like a sawmill gravy. You could do a beautiful pink. Like, I mean, I think if you're choosing a color and you want to base it off a transfer, pick one of the colors that's in the transfer and you will get a beautiful match every time. That's totally my, my advice for you. So this is the Magnificent Magnolia Transfer from Dixie Belle. Brand spanking new, my friends. And this is the color that we are going to be painting today. Weeping Willow, beautiful and green, chalk mineral paint from Dixie Belle. All right, let's do it. Enough of this gabbing already. Let's start to paint. Let's paint something already. Okay, so because this dresser 
is number one, old, <laughs> and number two, a little funky. See how it sits in? I can't put stops on the top. There is stops on the bottoms of these drawers on the dresser. I think it's just gonna be one of those pieces that you're like, hmm, she's a little, just a little fussy because she wants to do her own thing. Just a little fussy and vintage, kind of like me. Um, but I think that we will work around it. I've sanded the drawers down so they all close evenly, but they might not stay like perfectly in line. So like all things vintage, nothing is perfect. You have to kind of work with what you got. Let's, let's get painting. Brush I'm choosing today is the mini angle. Does anybody know why I wet my brush? Well, chalk mineral paint is zero VOCs, okay? That means there's no smell in here and this is a water-based product. This is a brand new jar, so it is nice and fresh. See how nice and fresh and runny it is? It's a beautiful texture. Sometimes when you're painting, you will find that you're seeing some brush strokes, right? We're obviously gonna be able to do two coats on this project, but mostly one coat on this project today. We will not be doing the actual transfer today. You're gonna to have to stay tuned for that because transfers need to go down onto very dry paint. And this, of course, is not all the way 100% dry yet, obviously. So, you spray your brush to minimize brush strokes. By keeping your brush a little bit damp, especially on the second coat, you're going to be able to minimize any brush strokes that you might see on your project. And remember, I put bonding boss in gray on this piece. I then came in and filled in any holes and scrapes with my Dixie Bells mud. And I then came back in with bonding boss, actually it's regular boss because that's what I had in the floor, in gray to cover my mud because I didn't want my mud to be naked on the drawers. I wanted to kind of protect it with the boss. So bonding boss plus mud plus another coat of either bonding boss or regular boss over top and you're good to go. Um, but I really didn't want to see a ton of texture on this piece. We're gonna be kind of classy, right? We're gonna do one even color of Weeping Willow. So I don't wanna see brush marks. So that means I'm gonna be spraying my brush as I go along whenever I feel it kind of start to drag a little bit or pull a little bit. You can spray your piece if you'd rather. Either way, spraying your piece or spraying your brush is gonna help you minimize any brush strokes that might happen and keep your paint nice and thin so that you can build it up in layers and not worry about big brush strokes happening on your piece. When I want a nice smooth look like I really want for this piece with that transfer, I'm gonna be using a lot of water to really nice keep it nice and smooth. Because you can see that I'm brushing the paint on. You also have the option to apply your paint like this and and i do that all the time you guys see me pouncing on my paint that's going to give you more of a textured look to your project versus a smooth look let's see if i can aim you down and you can see close up so this is the smooth version let's do a little bit on the second drawer with the texture and see if you can tell the difference it's it's not a lot that you're going to see when it's wet you would see it more when it's dry and it's just going to give you more of a stippling versus a smooth look. But I feel like for this piece, I want more smooth than stipple. Both, both are fine, both work equally well, to be honest, they're really not gonna make that much of a difference. And this is just the first coat. So if I wanted to stipple on for the second coat versus the first coat, I could do that as well. But I, I feel like I kinda want a smooth look on this guy. You do not have to seal your chalk mineral paint with anything. You do have the option to seal it with either clear coat or you can also use wax. You also could use hemp oil. Hemp oil is another thing that people um, don't think of often when they think of sealing a piece, but hemp oil is really great for dark colors to help really suck in that paint to your piece and it really gives you a streak-free finish when you're working with hemp oil. So I'm just gonna brush on my color and then we're gonna hold that transfer up again so that you can see how well this transfer is going to look with this color of paint. I think it's gonna be so pretty. Green and gold is always a great combo, um, but green, gold, and pink, I mean, hello, even, even better. Now, since these drawers are tight, and by tight, I mean wood on wood, no glides, right? And they, they close, but they don't close 
super duper great. What I will do is paint on my first coat and then open up the drawers a little bit so when I do the second coat, they're not gonna stick. I also won't be painting like the lip of this piece. So inside of your drawers, there's always that little lip of, of dresser. I don't think I'm gonna paint the lip of the dresser. If I do anything, it will be gold gilding wax, which is nice and thin to just kind of finish and make that edge look finished versus unpainted. Um, but I don't really wanna junk up my edges of my dresser with paint when the drawers are already like a tight, a tight fit, if you know what I mean, if you catch my drift. I did sand them down on the top, the sides and the bottom. It's just that this is a really old piece. You know, Art Deco could be anywhere from the 30s to 40s. Um, and it's, it's gonna take a little bit of TLC to make it exactly perfect the way I want it. But I think that this color is going to be so nice with the transfer. Let me show you again the color of the transfer with this color, Weeping Willow, because I think you're gonna to start to see it really come together. Let me pick up a piece of this transfer. So this is the new Magnificent Magnolia. If you look at the transfer beside that green, isn't that stunning? Now remember, this paint you're looking at is wet, so it's gonna dry a little bit darker in value than um, what you're seeing on camera right now. You can just see how it's starting to get a little bit dry in here versus the parts over here. It's gonna be a little bit darker, but I still think it's gonna be stunning. Again, dripping these florals down from the top lip, going over the drawer, over these edges, and then the transfer having a cascading effect down the front. I continued the process of painting in all of the Weeping Willow, two even coats across the entire piece. Then I used my artisan brushes as well as Gold Digger from the Moonshine Metallic line to paint in those inset details on the front of the dresser. After that had dried, I'm going to come in and add the rest of the beautiful transfer to the front of the piece. Remember that this paint must be thoroughly dry, wait at least 24 hours before you apply a transfer over top of dry paint. So first things first, plan out your initial placement for your transfer. Make sure you really move it around and get it exactly where you want it to be. Once I figured out the draping line for this part of the transfer, I scored the edge and then cut the transfer right off along the top. Remember, once you cut it, there's no going back, so really make sure your placement is perfect before you begin. If you need to use blue painter's tape to hold up your transfer design, you can totally do that. And then I simply remove the backing off of the transfer and apply the image down onto the piece. Each transfer package that you purchase from the Bells and Whistles line will arrive with an instruction sheet as well as that small little burnishing tool inside the package. The tool is what you use to push down onto the clear and release the image onto your project. From then on, I just continue to cut out the small little individual flowers and layer them down so that the design wouldn't be so straight across the front. I really wanted a more of a cascading draping look, so cutting up the flowers and applying them where you like is going to give it an uh, individual look as well as a unique look so it doesn't always look the same as anybody else that would purchase the transfer and stick it on a dresser. FYI, I still had a whole page of transfer images left over after I completed this part of the process. I came in and added my Would You Been Molding to the front little panel and you can see that I reapplied the Gold Digger to the inset parts of the dresser drawers. I sealed the entire dresser with satin clear coat. This is going to help with durability and really seal in that transfer when you're finished. And then this is the final look. I put in the original hardware on the top two drawers and the brand new glass hardware with the corresponding gold on them to the bottom three. I really love the way that this little dresser turned out. I love the contrast of gold with the pink flowers and Weeping Willow is one of my favorite colors from the Cottage Collection. I really think the only thing that I could have made this entire project better was keeping all of the pieces of original hardware. But sadly, with some of them being broken, this was the best effect that I could get. What do you think of this beautiful piece?